Hello and namaskar and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good today. We are going to go through 22nd and 23rd October's PIB news items. Uh, I have got two special topics for you guys. One is on India and USA. Now, if, uh, when we talk about India and USA's bilateral relationship, you know, you might have heard about this thing that, uh, of course, India is one of the biggest democracy in the world and USA is one of the oldest democracy in the world. So, this makes uh, both these countries a perfect partner. Apart from that, when we talk about defense partnership, may it be people-to-people -people contact, may it be uh, you know trade and investment, innovation, science and technology, nuclear power. So many things are common between both of us, right? And we are basically, in a nutshell, I can say that uh, this uh, this relationships spectrum has got uh, various different colors, right? I hope uh, this uh, thing will give you a good scenario or picture about this background of USA and India's relationship. Now, when we talk about relationship between any two countries, generally speaking, what happens is that 90 things are all right out of 100 and then you have some 10, 10 issues uh, that are creating or acting as a bone of contention between any two countries. And something similar uh, is the case with India and USA as well. Now, uh, for a very long period of time, uh, when Barack Obama was president, uh, when Manmohan Singh Ji was Prime Minister of India, then we know that uh, Narendra Modi came in, and now we have Mr. Trump in USA. So, uh, if, we, if we go through this whole years, right, we find that one issue has always been there, and this is H-1B visa. H-1B visa, basically H-1B stands for a category of visa. It is issued to guest workers uh, who are... Uh, uh, you know, applying for this work permit in USA uh, so that uh, they can work in USA, they can earn some money over there and after, you know, after a couple of years or maybe three years or then it is extended for another three years. So for six years, they can work over there in USA and after that, they have multiple options. Uh, we are going to talk about those things as well. So this H-1B visa is very important visa for people of uh, our country as well as it is important for various different uh, you know immigrants who are immigrating in USA uh, as work professionals uh, you know so it's a very important visa and uh, the thing is uh, now uh, as we are speaking now uh, the news is out that Mr. Trump or his administration or government of USA is rewriting rules for this H-1B visa. Now uh, this is going to impact now they are when, I, when we say rewriting they are going to make it a bit more tighter a bit more difficult uh, for Indian students or you can say skilled professionals uh, to to visit or to you know to go to USA and to work there or study there and this is going to create or this is going to impact millions of Indian students as well as uh, lacks of uh, Indian professionals so this is something that we need to this is a particular topic on which we need to have a thorough uh, in-depth discussion with USA we have to convince them that uh, this is not just for us it's a win-win scenario when when h1b visa particularly for indians are uh, are you know a bit more a bit more free or i would say a bit more liberal because since uh, 1990s uh, right when this uh, h1b visa category was introduced what we have seen is that million of indian students uh, or you can say skilled professionals uh, right uh, they they headed towards usa for for you know for living this american dream and they have uh, most of them they have achieved as well america is no doubt a very uh, you can say a fine place to work of course it's a it's a beautiful country and you have uh, you know lots and lots of uh, professional opportunities as far as education is concerned we know that mit and there are so many universities right they are uh, some of the top institutions of the world you find in usa so it's 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 no doubt uh, a place it's a magnet right uh, that is attracting talent uh, from various different parts of the world now, what they are trying to achieve here, this uh, USA government, uh, they are they are tightening this H-1B visa. At the same time, they are also uh, tightening this H-4 visa. Now, what this H-4 is all about, back in 2015, H-4 visa has been going on for a bit of long time now. But back in 2015, Barack Obama administration decided that uh, all those spouses, right, so husband will visit USA on H-1B visa and the wife will follow on H-4 or together they can go. Uh, one will have H-1 and the other one will have uh, H-4. Uh, it could be other way around as well. A lady could have H-1B visa uh, if she is 
a professional IT professional predominantly and uh, husband can uh, visit or accompany her uh, to USA on this H4 visa now earlier on before 2015 H4 visa people they were not allowed uh, they were not granted this permission to work there but uh, 2015 mr. Obama administration decided that all those people who are who are dependent on this h1b visa holders they should be allowed to to work if they have all those qualifications you know so they can do based on their qualification based on uh, the jobs that they can find you know uh, they can they can find a decent work and then they can work and together they can start a, a good family over there you know they can they can support their lifestyle and things like that so keeping this thing in mind uh, this h4 visa was introduced but now uh, trump administration is trying to get rid of this permission this work permit that you get if you have h4 visa so indirectly right on surface level it looks like they are trying to you know just to just make it a bit harder but indirectly what they are trying to do is that uh, they know the culture you know it's not that they don't know the culture particularly people who are working in this foreign offices of various different countries they know the culture if we know the culture of usa then of course they know the culture of india as well so they know that if if you separate husband and wife right if, if you don't allow h4 visa then it will impact h1b visa applications as well so directly indirectly they are trying to you know uh, they are trying to make it a bit more harder for for people uh, from not only india from from other countries as well uh, they are not only just uh, you know rewriting rules on h1b and h4 they are also tightening uh, international students arrival in usa uh, because they don't want uh, indian students or any other students to to overstay in usa and uh, students uh, they visit usa in this category called f1 uh, student visa this is uh, particularly the, what they want to do is they want to make it a bit more course specific and time period specific so once your college or university is over then you'll be given some three four months depends and then you have to visit back to india if you want to reapply then you have to come back to india and then you have to apply so it's basically start uh, starting from scratch again so uh, this is something that is uh, a matter of concern for our country because if we talk about foreign money uh, right uh, that we are that we are pouring in uni usa in terms of indian fees or indian students fees that they pay over there you know we have some 186000 indian students and most of them are studying in colleges or universities so we are sending huge amount of money right as well as talented people over there uh, we are number 2 uh, we are you know right after china it is uh, our rank in terms of uh, number of students uh, studying in the usa and let me tell you one more thing that uh, we pay higher fees as well international students right uh, uh, mostly pay higher fees uh, in uk in uh, in europe in usa uh, you know their native students if if their course fee is 5000 euro pound or dollar indian students will pay or international students will pay 8000 10000 depends on college and universities so we are also contributing in their education system uh, by by providing or being a source of uh, uh, you know funds uh, for these universities so here if they are restricting uh, indian students flow then they are going to face a loss as well in this term the other uh, or in this side uh, the other thing is uh, this the reason uh, that they are uh, you know uh, us administration is giving us this reason that they want to curtail this overstays uh, we find cases of overstays and it's not just indian students right we find overstays or this overstay is done by so many various different uh, students from various different countries so it's not just us the other thing is when it comes to h1b visa they are saying that uh, they want to curb the misuse of this h1b visa as well because what they are saying is that uh, people are coming here on h1b visa then they are applying for permanent residency and then they are applying for citizenship and then they become indian citizens oh, oh sorry us citizens and then they will call some more family members over here so uh, they want to curb this thing uh, but in reality right uh, if we read between the lines then it is all about this america first policy that mr trump has heavily promoted as well as uh, he is for this america first uh, pledge and promise uh, if we look at it from american perspective then mr trump is not doing anything wrong as well because in in diplomatic world the most important thing for you is to look after your own back or interest of your own country so he's doing the same thing but here we have to as i told you we have to negotiate with them we have to convince them that it's not just about us right if they are thinking that by by curbing indian 
students or by curbing Indian H-1B professionals, right, uh, this IT professionals and other professionals. If uh, this is going to create uh, more jobs for this nativist white population, then that is not always right because uh, when we talk about immigrants in general, right, uh, they are hungry, they are more hardworking compared to American citizens. And this is not something that is coming out from stereotype of prejudice. This is something that is fact and even USA government appreciates this hard work uh, been done by Chinese, Indian and other people uh, in USA. Uh, we are also contributing uh, in, in their economy. We are paying taxes over there. And these are the facts, data and arguments that we have to present them. We have to prove this thing that it's a win-win for both the countries because we are providing them skilled workforce. We are providing them this cream lot, you know. Uh, it's the cream lot, uh, the, the the most po best performers, uh, one of uh, top performers, right? Uh, they they head towards USA, and one of the reason is that they don't find that many opportunities even today. You know, if you compare opportunities that you get here in India and compare it with USA, then of course you know that uh, it's USA. That is, this is a fact. That we have to state the fact as it is, isn't it? So they find more opportunities over there. So it's there is no harm if if you are migrating somewhere. Because uh, there are some good points as well uh, when people are migrating in different parts of the world from our country. Like I'll give you a small example of uh, blue collar jobs, right? Now we have enough labors in our country, but when people from South India, predominantly Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, if they are migrating to Gulf countries, right, what they are doing is they are creating space over here in our country for blue collar jobs. At the same time, they are finding blue collar jobs over there, uh, good pay they get, and they send money back to our country, to their family members they are investing in land properties and other things so this is called remittance so a big chunk of remittance is also coming from outside so that's an additional income you can say for a country more investment is coming in in this sense so there is no harm in it as well many times we find that people say that people are flying and leaving this country as it is and they are not contributing no it's not always right they are contributing they are sending money back so and in terms of global reach as well global heft as well it's a good thing uh, we'll talk about it as we move ahead right so back in 1990s when this thing was introduced at that point of time there was a shortage of uh, people in, in in computer engineering computer services or se software services and uh, in first decade right to 50 percent of visas were allotted to indians and later on it went up a little bit 85,000 visas were in, uh, were you know allotted to indians uh, this h1b visa we are paying uh, social security taxes over there we are also contributing in other things like uh, if you if you compare indian immigrants uh, right or migrants uh, say for example uh, or this is indians living in usa uh, then we are uh, in terms of income uh, we are one of the highest earning group of immigrants in terms of education as well we are uh, quite educated highest education attainment and uh, they have this thing called model immigrants, right? Indians are their model immigrants. So we are contributing in society of USA. Apart from that, we know this thing as well, that when we talk about uh, this, uh, you know, IT professionals, when we talk about businesses, when we talk about uh, organizations who are innovating, we find taxpayers, enterprise, innovation, job creation, everything, right? Uh, we are contributing in all these uh, various different branches. Uh, now, when USA is, uh, you know, curbing uh, this flow of Indians by, by coming out with this rules, that 7% rule, uh, that uh, say, for example, if you are issuing 700 visas, then it will be allotted based on 7% rule. So a country like India, uh, having huge population, it, it is a disadvantage for India if they are coming out with this 7% rule. So we need to negotiate this thing. And as we have talked about so many positive things, you know, we have this WTO's General Agreement of Trade in Services uh, where we can, uh, you know, argue for movement of uh, natural persons or human beings, you know, personal. Uh, they should be allowed to migrate over there. And uh, this also helps in, in if, we, if we think from India's perspective, I told you about remittance uh, in terms of uh, global heft or weight, uh, right? If, if our people are living in different parts of the world, then this will help in people to people contact as well between both the nations so that's a good thing and uh, it is also said that in 2024 nikki haley and uh, kamala harris right uh, one of their parent uh, is from uh, both of them they are having indian genes in them so you can see in politics as well uh, we are playing a very important role so uh, these are the points right of course there are many other points that we can talk about but this is just a small example how we can mend this relationship uh, when it comes to this h1b visa 
Uh, there are so many positive things that we can discuss and we can create a win-win situation and we can argue for a bit more liberal H-1B visa for Indian professionals. So that's everything in uh, this particular topic. Now, dear friends, before moving ahead, I would like to introduce all of you to our pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams. We have different pen drive and tablet courses. To find out more about it, do check out studyaq.com. You can download the PDF of today's lecture from my FB page and Twitter handle. I have already shared it for you guys. Uh, now, the second topic is stubble burning. Now, burning crop stubble creates... Uh, Pollution, of course, it uh, destroys uh, this environment. It uh, releases this 2.5 microns all across the board, right? Uh, starting from uh, this Punjab, Haryana, uh, parts of Delhi, parts of Uttar Pradesh, this whole Indo Gangetic belt, right? Uh, right across to this Bay of Bengal, we find pollution in all this region. What happens in winter time is that winds are coming from uh, this northwestern part. So if you are burning stubble here, it will carry everything with it and it will spread it all across indo gangetic plain so this is something that our farmers needs to understand and for that punjab haryana and central government together they have to work as a team and they have to come out with a strategy through which we can sort this problem out now we have this option of happy seeders machine uh, this machine is uh, the one that you can see on your screen so it fits with your tractor and it will you know uh, chop away all this uh, residual so what happens here is uh, we take two crops in north uh, northwestern part of our country. We have paddy or rice and right after this rice is ready or paddy is ready, it is chopped off and then the fields are prepared for wheat or for rabi season. And uh, you have some 15-20 days time. So the best, you can say easiest thing uh, that farmers find is this one to uh, to burn their field right and once uh, this uh, fields are burned uh, burned out uh, they can uh, prepare it for uh, this wheat or rabi uh, crop sowing uh, but this is something that is not viable because it destroys uh, the fertility and there are other things uh, negative impact of this burning or this uh, burning crop stubble or residual so happy cedar machine is uh, one of the cheapest and easiest solution that we have so government of Punjab Haryana, central government as well as Uttar Pradesh government, uh, they should work uh, together and they should provide, you know, this easy availability of a happy cedar machine uh, is a good strategy. We have to apply carrot and sticks, uh, uh, carrots and sticks uh, strategy here. It basically means that uh, if someone is uh, cooperating, then provide them incentives. And if someone is not cooperating, then you need to pick up the stick as well you have to penalize them as well so if we find uh, farmers are still not obeying this order of uh, not uh, going ahead with this uh, option of stubble burning then government procurement uh, should be uh, should be stopped in all those areas where you find these farmers are indulging in this stubble burning uh, we have to provide them facilities we have to educate them we have to un make them understand that uh, the cheapest option is this uh, you know this uh, uh, this uh, the happy cedars is a very cheap option apart from that when they are burning uh, their their fields right uh, they are destroying soil fertility they are uh, this pushes farmer to use more input items like fertilizers water and uh, power more power is required so more input cost so less profit for farmers so it is not a win-win for farmer it's in fact uh, creating more loss for farmers in terms of pollution as well uh, water pollution air pollution soil pollution is going to become more and more severe so we have to educate them we have to create this awareness in our farmers at the same time we should allow uh, startups uh, you know they can come out with some business model how we can share these happy cedars uh, with various different farmers and the money that uh, farmers will save uh, you know if, if they are following this happy cedar strategy then they will save money because input cost will come down so we can also encourage big farmers medium-sized farmers to to contribute uh, in this uh, cost of uh, providing this uh, this uh, you know this happy cedars facilities to various different small and marginal farmers so we can work it out but if they are not following then we have to you know stick penalties we have to set some examples because we cannot risk lives of all those people who are living in this whole indo gangetic belt isn't it with this dear friends uh, moving on to another item this is uh, this was your second important uh, uh, special topic now we are going to go through some news items so first item is coming from election commission of india uh, now election commission of india you know how it works when elections are going to take place in any state assembly or state assembly elections when they are going to take place uh, before that we find that a high level delegation team of 
election commission of india will visit uh, you know that state so here we find that news so this is from with the help of this news what i'm trying to uh, teach you here is that uh, this is the process right that is followed by election commission so we know that elections are going to take place in some other states as well i think rajasthan is there then i think manipur is there as well so all this place right one after one we will find uh, madhya pradesh of course uh, is going to face election isn't it so we will find election commission of india visiting all these places here but elections are going to take place in telangana in 7th on 7th of uh, december 2018 so uh, the process is on the show is on now and how it works is uh, election commission of india will meet interact with all different parties right uh, bsp bjp cpi congress mim tdp trs cpim so representatives of all these uh, various parties they will meet these members of uh, election commission of india they will complain if they have any complaint they will suggest items to election commission and based on this thing they will prepare this whole election uh, how they will execute and all these things so uh preparedness ground deployment of uh, personnel and you know measures to ensure free and fair elections relevant training of to poll personnel all these things will be executed in near future now uh, one more thing that we have to educate ourselves on is that the petrol and diesel fuel when we talk about fuel fuel are not part of gst system uh even today we find central as well as uh, state vats are applied on uh, uh, various different fuel items now this particular news item is pertaining to delhi uh petrol pumps uh, nearly 400 petrol pumps in delhi uh, were petrol pumps and cng dispensing units they will remain shut uh, they are on strike because uh, last month uh, the central government slashed the rate of petrol and diesel by 2 rupees and 50 paise per liter uh, on each items petrol and diesel uh, and uh, other states you know they reduced uh, vat uh, state vat on these items so, so total 5 rupees were reduced by so many different states and uh, some union territories but delhi government has refused to reduce vat and this has created a sort of protest situation in delhi people of delhi are not happy with this decision and uh, various different political parties are also appealing to this uh, uh, delhi government uh, to think about this thing and reduce this uh, vat on uh, petrol and diesel items uh, now cbdt i have a question for you guys can you can give me the name of uh, the uh, the ministry under which uh, the cbdt the central board of direct tax uh, uh, you know uh, works uh, so give me the name of that ministry this is your question number 1 do stick your answer right now in the comment section if you know by the end of this lecture i will uh, let you know the right answer so the number of income tax returns that's what we are learning from uh, uh, this uh, statistics uh, that are issued by or released by this cbdt and the uh, number of tax payers tax income tax returns has gone up in last four financial years by 80% which is not bad at all uh, it was uh, uh, back in 2013 14 3.79 3 crore 79 lakh uh, tax payers were filing their income tax returns but in 2017 18 we find 6.85 so there is a rise of 80% which is not bad at all right when we talk about 1 crore rupee income earner or tax payer showing income above 1 crore rupees so this has gone up by 60% so that's a good thing it's a, it indicates that compliance uh, you know this compliance as well as people are contributing so it's a good thing so if we have wider tax base uh, the tax can come down at present what we have is this sort of scenario where we have uh, higher tax because of tax bases or pe- number of people paying tax is quite small uh, on an average in oecd com- countries right uh, usually there is a 9% uh, average uh, we are somewhere around 5.98 so we need to reach 9 or if we can cross 9 that's a good thing as well if government will not have any revenue coming in then government cannot work on developmental and growth project of defense and everything right uh, works on this money that we contribute now ministry of external affairs we have three items the first one is india and croatia so first of all let's uh, Uh, find out where croatia is right so in southern europe uh, we see here italy and if we cross this adriatic sea we find this tiny country called uh, croatia the c- capital is uh, zadar uh, i beg your pardon the capital is uh, Zag- zagreb right uh, zadar is a big uh, city uh, Z- zagreb is its uh, capital and uh, uh, deputy prime minister and foreign minister of croatia uh, they were here in our country india and uh, we have agreed uh, to to strengthen our relationship in this area of cultural and uh, diplomatic cooperation we have also talked about discussed ways to step up cooperation in trade and investment health science and tech education tourism and culture uh, 
NSG, that is Nuclear Supplies Group. We are not part of this thing. Uh, China has been opposing our entry for a very long period of time now. And Croatia has supported for India's accession to this NSG. At present, NSG is having 48 group members, right? And here how it works in NSG is that even if one member is saying no, then you cannot allow a country to enter this. So we have to convince China. At the same time, we have to create this uh, favorable uh, scenario where other countries are supporting us. We are affected by terrorism and together we have decided that we need to fight uh, this crowd of terrorism moving on to another item it is coming up from pakistan it is about terrorism we have warned them and this is not the first time we have repeatedly urged pakistan we have warned them as well that you if you want to talk with us then you have to get rid of this environment of terrorism you have to stop supporting in terms of finance in terms of breeding ground in terms of you know providing political as well as safety or you know all these things uh, that is provided to various different uh, Hafiz Saeeds and, you know, this uh, Masur Azads and other sort of people, uh, they should be behind the bars rather than forming political parties. Uh, last item of the day, it is about uh, this uh, uh, International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor. This is in France, this reactor ITER. And the reason why it is in news is because India has taken a lead over the nations in delivering equipment to France for this ITER research project, which is aimed at generating energy through nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion is a, a thing, right? Uh, or, or you can say the fusion energy is is what, uh, right, we find the sun and stars. Other stars are working on this fusion uh, energy. So we are trying to create uh, fusion energy, nuclear fusion energy from last, uh, when I say we, I mean to say uh, global uh, leaders with the help of this ITER you have this uh, China India Japan Korea Russia USA EU all these countries from last 35 years are working in collaboration uh, on this experiment right this experimental device so that we can create this fusion so uh, still we are working on it but India's role uh, in this uh, thing has increased and nearly 40 percent of items uh, supplied are coming from India and there are 35 nations uh, altogether they have collaborated in this southern France facility world's largest uh, tokamak uh, or a magnetic fusion device designed to prove the feasibility of fusion energy based on the same principle that powers our sun and stars so that's everything in today's discussion dear friends uh, CBDT works under Finmin that is finance ministry this is your answer of the question that's everything in today's discussion thank you very much for your support and uh, I was working for uh, GPSC students. Uh, the exams uh, are now over, so I was preparing lectures. So I was not uh, able to find time. Uh, and on, you know, Dashera is was a uh, holiday, bank holiday. So on bank holidays, on national holidays, you don't get PIB. So on 20, uh, so here it is, uh, 22nd and 23rd. From tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll try to give you 24th. Uh, October's PIB analysis. Make sure you do share this lecture with other students. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Jai Hind.